Welcome to Straight Talk. This is Dhaka Tribune editor Zafar Subhan. I am here with a man who needs no introduction, Mr. Shamshir Mubin Chaudhary Bir Bikram, who is a celebrated freedom fighter before moving on to a glittering career in Bangladesh's foreign service. Serving as Bangladesh's foreign secretary as well is our ambassador to the United States of America and the Federal Republic of Germany before of course, moving into politics, where until 2015, he was the vice chairman of the BNP and is now a member of uh, Bikol Pudhara Bangladesh. Uh, Mr. Chaudhary, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So, elections are just around the corner. Let's move straight to it. How do you see everything? Um, do you think uh, it's a good thing that uh, we're moving towards elections as opposed to where we were five years ago, perhaps? Well, first of all, I look at this uh, upcoming election on the 30th of December as significant and historical. Yes. Significant because all parties are taking part. Absolutely. It's that participatory. That is very, very important. And then it is perhaps one more step towards uh, making democracy take roots in Bangladesh, which yes. is still in a shaky state. Yes. It's historical because this is the first time since 1979 that an election held under a party government and all parties are taking part. Yes. In the last time we had the 1979. <coughs> yeah. As you know, the 86 election was boycotted by uh, a major party. 88 was boycotted by all major parties. That's right. And the 91, 2007, 2000, 2006, 2000. All of the other ones were under, under non-party caretaker, caretaker governments. Government, yeah. So this is, uh, this is a good sign. Yeah. That I think we're moving towards a culture where we learn to accept or have trust. Uh, I'm sure... Uh, as for the results are out, either way, we'll go back to the old system of saying it was rigged, it was not fair, it was intimidation, etc., etc. Uh, even then, I think it's good that we are having an election that is participatory. We no, hope absolutely. it will be peaceful and fair. Yes, I mean, you know, we are seeing a lot of violence, but of course, we've seen a lot of violence in the past, perhaps more violence in the past, one could even say. And the hope is that at least this is the start of something. You know, you'll have an um, elected... Uh, government, we'll have an opposition, and then let's see where that takes us. Now, I mentioned, of course, that we are having a participatory election, but one person who's not participating in this election is yourself, which is, uh, I think, a disappointment to the voters in your in your locality, for sure. What uh, moved that decision on your part? Well, my party is taking part in the election. Yes. I, as a candidate, have uh, taken myself out of the That's race. That's right. Although I got my nomination, I was out in the field. Yes. And as you know, my party, Bikol Pothara Bangladesh, yes. is actually actually working very closely with Mahajot, which is led by the Awami League. Yes. So we have three candidates from Bikol Pothara who are contesting mm -hmm. as Mahajot candidates. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there were 20 of us who were contesting as Bikol Pothara candidates yes. in what they call open seats. Where That's there right. were Awamili candidate, there was a PNP candidate, yeah. in some cases there were even Jatiyo Party candidates. So in my constituency, which is still at six, yes. and where my ancestral home is, yes. in, in the village called Bhadeshwar, in Golabganj Upazila, I had uh, come across as a candidate, it was accepted, and uh, I had started my campaign. But then we came to a strategic uh, decision with the Mahajot that if I as a candidate which is aligned with the Mahajot and then there's a Mahajot candidate which is the present education minister, yes. we'll probably end up dividing our votes. Sure. And that would not help uh, the Mahajot. Who, uh, well, it certainly makes sense from an electoral point of view. I can certainly understand the logic behind that. But of course, you know, presumably you knew that uh, um, the education minister was going to be the Awamili candidate even before you had a strong inkling that that was going to be the case. That being the case, did it? Did you ever think of perhaps, I would imagine, their constituencies in Dhaka perhaps where you might have been an attractive candidate? Well, I've always thought of being, uh, if I'm going to uh, be an elected MP, yeah. It should be from my district, which is Sinai. Sure, of course. So, uh, in the past, I was uh, very much toying the idea of running for a seat from Sinai 1, which is Sinai Town itself. Yes. But then, since I moved to uh, Bikol Podhara, uh, which after a gap of three years when I came back to politics again, mm -hmm. uh, with my health permitting, I thought, no, I might as well do something different, which is to go and try to represent my people in my village. Yes. Interestingly, you know, when you file your nomination paper, you have yeah. to have somebody who identifies you. That's right. Somebody who proposes you, somebody who seconds you. Yes. The tradition is that somebody who is kind of a respected or eminent person in the area is a voter there. He yes. 
recognizes you, yeah. he uh, kind of proposes you, and somebody else seconds you. Sure. I did something very different this time. Okay. I went to a farmer, ah. literally a Krishok, a literally paddy farmer in my village, and yeah. I said, would you like to be my, uh, my sponsor? And uh, he was very moved. He was very touched. He said, nobody have ever asked me this. Yes. I was only told to go and vote. Yes. But the fact that I'm being asked to sponsor someone, and someone like who's a freedom fighter, who's a wounded freedom fighter, yes, so I'll be my honor to sponsor you. So he sponsored me. Okay. My proposer was a owner of two small shops in my yes. village. My seconder was also small owner of a small business in my village. So it had nothing to do with the upper echelon of the society, as people call them. I yes. went to the grassroots. And then that I thought that for me was a great sense of satisfaction. For those people also, they feel very involved. And the few days that I campaigned around the area, they were always with me. I mean, I was spending them days with them. They come and sit with me in the evenings. We would strategize the next day's move. So I think this was for me also a launching pad. Well, sure. I'm not getting younger. But at least I have... I, I think I you've felt got a I few years left in right. you, we hope. <laughs> I, I, I am positioned to start to repay my debt to my village. My father was born there. My of course, My uncles yeah. were born there. They went to school there. Okay. And very uh, interesting that the village has schools, primary schools, co-education that are 100 years old. Yes. Can you imagine a village in Bangladesh in a conservative area like sure. Silet to have a co-education primary school which is 100 years old? Well, I think Bangladesh does surprise us as a country. In the rural ways. areas are not nearly as backward as some people no, would have I think us believe. They are, they are our strength. Absolutely. They are provide us see. vitality. That's right. They're the farmer who feeds us. That's right. And, you know, people shouldn't forget that. And I think, you know, they are our voters. They are the backbone of this nation. Absolutely. I think that's a great thing which you did. And, you know, if that starts to sort of become a trend and we start listening to the voices of your average Bangladeshi more and bring them more into the political process, I think the, com the country will only benefit from that. Well, I hope so. I hope, I hope, whether it become a trend or not, but certainly I feel very uh, contented yes. that I touched base with the farmer. Yes. Because, you know, if you realize that since 1971, our population has more than doubled. Yes. And we're still not a food deficit country. I mean, yeah. we are marginally. Sometimes we are a food surplus country. Yeah. No, in credit, fact, we're doing far better than credit, we have in the past. Absolutely. And credit is to the farmer. Yes. The land has not increased. Yes. How did the farmer manage to double, sometimes even more than double his uh, produce in the, yeah. in the paddy field? So it's a great credit to him. No, absolutely. I mean, the story the of Bangladesh since our independence has been an amazing story. Amazing story. You know? Amazing story. And of course, you, you talk about the farmers, and we could also mention a lot of the people who go abroad from Bangladesh mm -hmm. have, a, uh, you know, have a very humble background, but mm -hmm. it's really based on their labor that the economy continues to grow. The you know, billions, of, billions of dollars worth of remittances. It's a big a deal. That's a very yeah. important input to our economy. Absolutely. Okay. Um, we'll take a short break on that note. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about the election sure. uh, after the break. Please join us after the break. This is Zafar Zaban speaking with Shamsher Mubin Chaudhary um, on Straight Talk. Thank you. Welcome back to Straight Talk with Zafar Sabhan. I'm in conversation with Shamsher Mubin Chaudhary Bir Bikram. Mr. Chaudhary, so let's talk a little bit about the fact that you were in the BNP for so many years. And um, um, you were in the BNP for so many years, and then uh, you resigned from the party, and this time when you're back in politics, you're with Bikal Pudhara. What precipitated that move on your part? Well, when I uh, left politics in 2015, October. Yes. Uh, it was not uh, uh, resigning from BNP per se. Yeah. The decision was because of health crowds. Exactly. I retired from politics. That's right. And I said because of my decision to retire from politics automatically means that I resign from a political party and I s resign all my posts in the political yeah. party. So it is nothing to do with being against the BNP or anything of sure. that kind. In my letter of, you know, pulling out of politics. I also added that in the future, health permitting, and if there are political forces that I believe 
are committed to the values of our liberation war and the independence of Bangladesh, I'll be willing to provide service or help in any way I can. Yeah. So as uh, time passed, I, 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 I checked with my doctor, they said it's okay. And then I was approached by Dr. Badruddin Chaudhary, who, as you know, is a former president, is yes, a founding secretary general of BNP course, also. A very respected figure, Very yes. respected person, a physician by profession, uh, a senior uh, citizen, elderly who people look up to. Uh, and I said, why not? I can try to come and help you. So I uh, walked up to him and he gladly accepted me, gave me a post in the party. And then he said, look, we are, why don't you, you know, run for the election? And that, that is the time the dialogue process had started, you see, yeah. with the Awami League, the Prime Minister was having dialogue with the Oiko Front uh, and yeah. then with uh, Bikal Padhara and Jukta Front and then with the others also. So that is through that process of dialogue, it was uh, agreed that I shall, you know. Put, okay. But there okay. wasn't a sense that you thought that today Bikal Padhara would be a better fit for you than the BNP, I which feel, is where I you feel, have... Yes, I feel very comfortable because the Bikal Padhara stand is very clear on what, where, you know, because uh, uh, the stands on the issue of our war of independence okay. and, our, and our freedom movement. Uh, very clear on that. So I think it's, it's a great uh, feeling that uh, I'm comfortable here uh, mentally and physically and politically. So I, I think I can contribute uh, okay. here. How do, you, uh, how do you view the uh, Oiko Front, which has now seen essentially the joining of the 20-party alliance under the BNP with uh, Dr. Kamal Hussain and his Ghana Forum? I think a lot of people credit that as giving a new impetus to the opposition. How do you see it? Well, it can, one can look at it from two ways, uh, perhaps even more than two ways. First of all, <coughs> it certainly has raised the profile of the political forces that are opposed to the Awami League. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Kamal Hussain uh, is a very well-known uh, international jurist. Uh, he has been in the political uh, circle for a very, very long time. He was very close to Bangamundu uh, personally and politically, uh, professionally too. Uh, so obviously he brings uh, some value. The question that uh, comes to people's mind uh, is someone like Dr. Kamal Hussain, Mr. Kadir Siddiqui, who's a well-known freedom fighter, uh, Mr. Sultan Mansoor, you know, all very strong pro-liberation forces. How do they stand on the same platform with forces that were openly, ideologically, and mm. otherwise opposed to the creation of Bangladesh? Mm. So that's an answer that Dr. Kamal Hussain can answer best. But I surely there were always answer. freedom fighters within the BNP. And they, the were, BNP they were, they were, they were. And uh, in fact, in fact the founder of years. BNP is a freedom fighter of himself. Course. I mean, a very renowned freedom fighter, Major uh, President Zia Rahman Biruttam. Uh, there were gallantry award winners inside, and there still yeah. are gallantry award inside the BNP. So, but the thing is that Dr. Kamal Hussain and, and uh, Mr. Sultan Mansoor and Kader Siddiqui, they have been open vocally against a particular political force. Yeah. They, would, they said, we will never attend the same reception where they go. They will yeah. never attend the same program where they turn up. I guess this kind of contradictions and dichotomy, uh, I think, have become kind of a uh, not accepted, but uh, have become part of the play. But the way I politics. would look at it is, I kind of look at it as a positive sign that the fact that you can actually have a realignment, perhaps in some ways, of sort of political forces. And, you know, on the one hand, you have people like Kadir Siddiqui and Dr. Kamal Hussain, as you mentioned. On the other hand, you have people like Dr. Badr Doza Chaudhary and yourself, who have sort of moved somewhat in the other direction. To me, it's actually a good sign because it shows that politics in Bangladesh is no longer a blood sport, where you kind of have a, this tribal division. You know, people are looking and they're looking at what alliance makes sense for me. Okay, what alliance do I think is going to be uh, uh, good for the nation? And I think when we can have these kinds of uh, this kind of sort of decision making on the part of the political parties in our political classes. I actually look at that as a, as a positive because I think it takes a little bit of the steam out of the very vitriolic politics we had had up until the last, uh, the last, even the last year, you could say. Well, I think inclusive politics is always a good thing. Yes. Very, very good thing. And uh, then people feel more engaged. They want to yeah. be involved. Uh, elections become participatory. Politics becomes participatory. Uh, and because of our history, I think there is that element, you know, where one stood at that very, very critical time of, of, uh, of the country's birth uh, as, 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 a, as a nation. So uh, that issue is there. But in spite of that, I think by and large, it is a good thing that people are engaged uh, in politics. And in the long term, I think the <coughs> moderate voices 
patriotic voices will eventually come come forth, come you know, and, and win. I mean, an election is not even a spot in a nation's life. It's smaller than a spot in a nation's life. Mm -hmm. Politics is not an event. It's a process. Elections mm -hmm. is part of the process only. So as we look forward, I think we, we should address in our political narrative what message we bring to the future generation. Yes. We tend to, tend to ignore that they are a majority of the voters right now. Yes, by we, far, in fact. By far, and, and growing. Mm -hmm. And so do we give them uh, 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 reasons for hope? Yes. Do we give them some faith and some confidence in Bangladesh? Uh, I think with the kind of economic and social uh, kind of miracle that Bangladesh has shown so far, there's still a long way to go. Mm -hmm. I think job opportunities are still a major challenge for Bangladesh. There are far more youth coming out, educated yeah. coming and out the into the market. The problem we have is not as though the uh, economy doesn't create jobs, it's just there's so many of us. So even if you create a great deal of jobs, there's still a great deal more which need to be created. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think growth, jobless growth is not always a sign of strong economy. Absolutely. It, yeah. it might come undone at so some time or the other. So that's something we can work on after uh, the election. So we have to have uh, a, a, a clear, very clear political uh, objective in mind, which is that what are we going to do for the youth? Absolutely. At the same time, what we do for the farmer, for the fisherman, sure. you know, for the, the the poor people, or what, you want, what the lower income group of the society. Sure, the disadvantaged, absolutely. Uh, very, you're talking of the role of the <coughs> expatriate community. That's right. You know, people t tend to miss the fact that their remittances have much greater impact on the society, economically and otherwise, than even ready-made garment exports. No, absolutely. Imports. If you look at the net and the value impact, addition, and the value addition, it's a one hundred percent more, value addition fact. of it's remittances. Much more, absolutely. So ready-made garments, you have 35, 40 percent value addition. That's right. If 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 that. And, yeah, we can just do the math. Yeah. You can do the math. So I think this this whole role of the expatriate Bangladeshi community is very very important. Absolutely. Especially those in the. Uh, Gulf countries. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who are remitting more than those who are in the, in the West. The yes. British, in, in the United Kingdom, the second, third generation don't feel the need to remittance. No, because absolutely. They have the ones who go to Malaysia, to the Gulf, to the Gulf to they're Italy. the ones who are, in really, Europe, it is Italy. Who are really remitting money back. They're remitting yeah. money mm -hmm. back. Not so much for United States. There is some from United States, yeah. but not as no, much. No, no, you're as right it. about that. Anyway, let's uh, hold that thought for a second. We'll be uh, back after a commercial break. Thank you. Uh, this is Zafar Saban in conversation with Shamsher Mobin Chaudhary Bir Bikram. We will be back after the break on Straight Talk. Thank you. Welcome back to Straight Talk. This is Dhaka Tribune editor Zafar Subhan. I'm in conversation with Shamsher Mubin Chaudhary, Bir Bikram. Mr. Chaudhary, so we've been talking about politics. I think one of the things which we can be very hopeful for after this election is that we will actually have an opposition sitting in parliament in maybe some of the you know parliamentary norms which we have not seen in the past in Bangladesh can start to be instituted. Do you think that's something we can hope for post elections? Do you see that kind of ground being laid by the process? Well, I, I would uh, very much like to see a uh, post election political scenario mm -hmm. where the winner, whoever the winner is, uh, opens uh, out to the other side Absolutely. and makes that it more inclusive wonderful. and effective parliament. Yeah. Two things I would like to see, that perhaps uh, there may be post of one, more than one deputy speaker and one may be given to the opposition. Okay. That's number one. Number two, the parliamentary standing committees, you know, whether you have chairman of some of them from the opposition, key yeah. ones or more members. And number three, which is most important, a consensus not to, or to, sh uh, consensus to shun the culture of parliamentary boycotts. Absolutely. You can walk out yeah. and come back, but boycotting has become a very uh, unhealthy time. Well, you see, when you're doing that, you're not, uh, you know, you're actually um, letting down your own constituent. Yeah, you're you, not fulfilling your responsibility. Unethical. It's unethical. Mm. It may not be illegal, but it's unethical. Sure. Because A, as you said, mm -hmm. you are denying your people who voted for you the chance yeah. that they should be heard in the parliament. Yeah. B, you're taking all the privileges and benefits that comes with becoming a member of parliament. 
Right. You know, but you're not doing your job. You're not doing your job. You're yeah. even taking the salaries. That's you're right. not doing your job. So that I think is unethical and immoral. Now, do you think uh, Article 70 is that is the repeal or the rewriting of Article 70 something you'd like to see happen? <laughs> I would very much like to see uh, Article 70 being rewritten. Yeah. Um, I think the initial rationale behind having Article 70 at the early stages of our country existence had some justification. Merit, but now perhaps we've outgrown it. it, it yeah. it's, now we have outgrown it. So what one can do, at, do that is to amend it slightly, okay. where members can vote on any bill, yeah. depending on the conscience or Absolutely. their first constitution, yeah. except, except in the case of a vote of no confidence sure. and, and on a money bill. Which and that's budget. something you actually see in other in other countries. I think India as has well. already moved to that. Right, so it's not a, it yeah. wouldn't be uncommon no. at so all. The, so the members said? of parliament do not feel shackled, yes. uh, even when they have to take a side on what we thought was an anti-people bill. Uh, sure. You know, like even the the uh, the IT, the, uh, the digital, digital security, security act, act, for yeah. example. I think somebody can say no. I, I think there, there is. I mean, it's, I'm not against the digital security act. Totally. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying that there, well, is there could have been a there could have been a better debate about it. There could have better mm -hmm. debate about it. There are elements of fear in the media. I yeah. think effort should have been made to you know yeah. remove those fears. What other reforms do you see which could be useful? But moving I forward think Bangladesh. Yeah. First of all, Bangladesh. I think Bangladesh should increase the number of members of parliament. Okay. And we were 75 million at the time of our birth. Mm -hmm. We had 300 MPs. We are now more than double that number as population. Sure. But the number of MPs have remained the same. Yes, yeah, so you have large unwieldy uh, constituencies. Nepal yeah. Britain, for example, mm. has only 62 million people, and there are 650 members in the, in the House of Commons. Right. And in, uh, then we could think of a bicameral legislature. I think that would be a great upper idea. House. Nepal, which is much later stepped into democratic governance uh, because they had monarchy until yeah. pretty lately. Uh, but almost revolutionary change mm. in the legislative process, and uh, they have an upper house. Yeah. Now, do you see any appetite for this within the Mahajota? You know, let's talk about the Uwami League, which I is, think of course, the, the main party. I think the is very firm on this. That's right. We, we, we will press for it. We hope we can start a public debate on this, even if not in the parliament, and create uh, you know, a, a, a general narrative uh, that, yes, there need for reforms mm -hmm. in the legislative structure of Bangladesh. There can be more reforms. I mean, Sri Lanka yeah. is a federal state. It is much smaller than Bangladesh. Right. It has eight provinces. So why couldn't we think of those kind of things? I think devolving power down to the, well, the divisions in Bangladesh would not be a bad idea. And it's not just decentralization. Mm -hmm. When you say decentralization, you must also devolve equally. Yes. Decentralizing without devolving power is only half the job. Well, sure, then you it's no job at all, actually. It's, it's not a job at all. So you mm -hmm. must actually devolve authority. I mean, you have yeah. elected city mayors who have no fiscal powers, or hardly any fiscal powers for that matter. Yeah. They're having to rely on the central budget here, or the LGRD ministry budget. Yeah. You know. So I think these reforms must must be brought in. I think it's only be keeping with the times. Yeah. That Bangladesh should well, I mean, forward. you know, but of course, the interesting thing is, of course, the uh, the Jati Oiko Front has mentioned some of these uh, is reforms. So, does that give you hope that perhaps there can be some kind I of consensus moving forward? I think more than Jati Oiko, others have also done it, and yeah. uh, uh, I think Bikal Padar is working our own manifesto, and these are things that are now being discussed. Of course, uh, we only present the manifesto in a couple of days. Uh, we, we hope to keep a more concrete, uh, concrete sure. shape. The idea is that there has to be reform. Reform is not a bad word. Reform is yeah. a wonderful word. And I think everything in the world reforms, yes. especially the man-made things reform, you know, yeah. constitutions reform, state of reforms. Course. So I think we should look forward to real serious reforms of political culture. Yeah. We have done well in, so in social economic areas, yeah. but the politics has not caught up with That's those. That's true. It's uh, kind of lagging behind. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, I think one thing about the um, election which is coming up is, you know, it's shown a level of political maturity, I think, which perhaps we didn't have five years. We're moving back uh, to a system of more cooperation. There have been dialogue, there's mm -hmm. been negotiation. And if that will carry on mm -hmm. into the next parliament, right. that would be a fantastic thing. I hope so. So one hopes that uh, we will see that, and one will hope that this is just really the start of something new in some kind of way. You see the parliament, you see mm -hmm. the government, you see the opposition mm -hmm. working together, because of course that's what we all you know, we all want Bangladesh Absolutely. to advance. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mubin. Absolutely, Chaudhry, my Bir pleasure. Bikram, it was wonderful to talk to you. I haven't seen you in a while, so I'm glad you're looking very well. <laughs> thank you for taking the time to uh, join uh, me today on uh, Straight Talk, and it's been wonderful talking to you. Well, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Zafar Subhan presenting Straight Talk. I hope to see you next week. Thank you.